One thing that's really disturbing when it comes to the microbiome, you quickly mentioned the fact that glyphosate preferentially kills the good microbes. Right. Talk about that in more detail. Yeah, that's amazing. And actually, I've, I feel very proud of myself that I, when I, after I watched that, that presentation, I went back and started reading everything I could with, uh, about glyphosate, and I hooked up with Anthony Samso. He, he and I published several papers together. And the first one, it was where we, we, we had in the title, gut microbiome, that glyphosate would be disrupting the gut microbiome. Um, and then we had a big uh, paper that talked about our proposal that glyphosate was toxic. Uh, that paper was published in the journal Entropy, and um, and you know they um, the industry had managed to get another paper retracted, which was by uh, a French group. Uh, Seralini was the lead of that paper on on rats exposed to low dose glyphosate. I had read that paper as that paper was that what compelled me to keep going. Once I had heard the presentation, I read that paper and I said, "This has got to be it." And I kept you know kept looking for for more data. That paper got retracted right around the time that our paper was published. And then there was pressure to, to retract our paper. And our journal stood strong. And they even put a thing up on their website that said they wouldn't bow to pressure from, you know, vested interests who they had a, a claim that they, they basically admitted that the industry was trying to get our paper retracted. So I was really pleased that it stayed up. And that paper talked about the gut microbiome and about glyphosate. Our, uh, our prediction that glyphosate was uh, uh, suppressing the beneficial bacteria, particularly lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. And what's pleasing is like 10 years later, other papers started showing up saying the same thing with evidence, you know, through studies, because we just were kind of, it was conjecture on our part uh, to a large degree. And so we were, I was quite pleased that uh, we turned out to be, uh, to be vindicated many years later by other papers that are showing up now. And acromancia is another one. I was really, um, I suspected that acromancia might be sus uh, suppressed by glyphosate. And then I went to look, and sure enough, there was a paper talking specifically about acromancia. So acromancia, bifidobacteria, lactobacillus, those are all really beneficial. Acromancia has been getting a lot of uh, visibility lately because they found that it actually produces a metabolite that stimulates the gut and uh, endocrine system to release a GLP-1. And as you probably know, GLP-1 analogs are a big hit right now. And pharma's so happy because they're making lots of money selling these GLP-1 uh, analogs, which are uh, pretending to be GLP-1. And so you can think that we're not producing enough because we don't have enough acromancia. And that's why we have to take this drug. And I actually worry about the drug um, really pretending because GLP-1, I think, is a signal that says, hey, you know what? The gut microbes are working fine. And therefore, you can go ahead and release the insulin and do all everything you do with metabolism. If its gut's not working fine, that's when GLP-1 becomes suppressed. This is what I think, theoretically. And uh, and so when it's suppressed, then you you get you know you have diabetes, you get fat, all these problems. But it's a uh, it's because your body is aware that the gut microbes aren't working properly, which has huge implications for human health because the gut microbes supply. A really important nutrients for the host. And if they're not working properly, there's kind of a red alarm that goes off throughout the body that says, we got to be careful here, you know, and strategies change as far as metabolism goes. In a sense, I'm thinking that you need to sort of store fat around the abdomen because the microbes are not making enough of those short chain fatty acids that they normally make that are so healthy for the host. And the, the butyrate in particular is another one that I've seen a lot, a lot of papers lately coming out on butyrate, which is a short-chain fatty acid produced by the gut microbes, and it fuels the uh, colonocytes lining the colon. And so um, that's their favorite food, and, and, and it's been shown to be suppressed. The amount of butyrate is low in many different conditions that have to do with gut dysbiosis, and including conditions like Parkinson's disease that having to do with brain problems. So it's all connected to the gut-brain axis. When the microbes aren't happy, the brain's not happy either. The microbes let the brain know that, hey, we got a problem here. So I think there's kind of a systemic problem that arises as a consequence of a gut problem. And that gut problem is the dysbiosis. Let's take that story even further. What happens to colonocytes and then beyond? Yes, well, then the colonocytes don't do well because they're not getting enough butyrate and they become, and their mitochondria, in fact, become uh, uh, damaged. And so they, they can't, they're not working very well. And then as a consequence of that, uh, there's sort of, a, you get a leaky gut is one of the things for sure, is that the gut becomes leaky because the uh, colonocytes are not healthy. 
And, uh, and that's been shown also experimentally with glyphosate that it causes a leaky gut. And that's really a serious problem because then the microbes can get across the barrier and all the uh, metabolites that they produce, many of those metabolites are toxic and they can get across the barrier because of the leaky gut, including glyphosate can get across the barrier. And also glyphosate can bind to aluminum and carry it across the barrier and then aluminum can circulate and get to the brain. Uh, I had a paper on, on this idea that glyphosate is escorting aluminum to the brain, and, and aluminum in the brain is a feature of autism. If that's been shown in post postmortem studies, too much aluminum in the brain, and of course also in Alzheimer's, it's very clear that aluminum in the brain is a factor leading to Alzheimer's disease. And both autism and Alzheimer's are going up dramatically over time, exactly in step with the rise in glyphosate usage on core crops. Okay, so the way I understand what you just explained, with a bit more nuance, the glyphosate is masking metals like aluminum helping escort them through the leaky gut up into the brain. The acidity in the brain allows them to unbind from each other right. and then cause the toxic effects in the brain. Of both of them, both the glyphosate and the aluminum become toxic once they separate, yes. And that's a very, very serious problem. So when it comes to the leaky gut, is the mechanism glyphosate directly impacting that or is that through the butyrate it, and cutting well, off that... They, that fuel for the colonocytes. Yeah, it's hard to know exactly what the mechanism is, but the, there was a study that demonstrated that glyphosate causes that. Um, that I, th I think there were two uh, peer-reviewed studies that uh, that showed it experimentally that when glyphosate with glyphosate exposure, the gut became leaky. Um, so I don't know that those papers understood what the mechanism was, but I suspect it has to do with the butyrate. Um, you know, in inflammation, um, damage to the colonocytes and then um, they, can't, uh, they can't hold the barrier. Okay, so there was a few different mechanisms you mentioned at the beginning. We got into the microbiome. One of the other ones was the minerals in the soil. Yes. So glyphosate is chelating minerals, not allowing plants to absorb those. Right. So when we eat the plants, they're gonna be missing those minerals. And then in turn, if animals eat those and we eat the animals, Yes. <laughs> Obviously, there is a problem the there as well. <laughs> so let's get into the mechanism and what minerals are greatly impacted. Yes. In fact, I had a whole paper on manganese, which is interesting. And of course, magnesium is magnesium is a magnificent uh, mineral, so important because so many um, enzymes depend upon magnesium as a catalyst. So a lot of things become uh, in trouble without adequate magnesium. Manganese, magnesium, copper, zinc, um, Let's see, what else? Uh, <laughs> those are the main ones, I think. Um, manganese, magnesium, copper, and zinc um, have all been shown to be uh, chelated by glyphosate. And, um, and of course, these minerals are, minerals are interesting because they can be toxic. Um, and I guess actually probably iron even. Uh, I'm not so sure about iron. Uh, iron. It does mess up iron for sure. I'm not sure to what extent it binds to iron. Um, it messes up iron through messing up enzymes that manage iron. So it's a complicated story. I wrote about some of that in my book, I think. So um, anyway, uh, uh, manganese deficiency, I think, is, uh, is a feature of, of autism. And uh, the interesting thing about manganese is that glyphosate, chelating it, making it unavailable, um, actually prevents it from getting uh, recycled. And glyphosate disrupts the bile acids, so it causes a inefficient production of bile acids because of CYP enzymes, cytochrome P450 enzymes in the liver are suppressed by glyphosate. And manganese normally is sent back to the gut via the bile acids, bound to the bile acids, and then delivered through, through, throughout the body uh, via the circulation. And that pathway gets shut down with the glyphosate. This was a, uh, we published a paper on this theory. Manganese is interesting because it is actually very good at traveling along nerve fibers. And in fact, there's a condition called manganism that shows up in welders because the welders are, are, are exposing themselves to manganese when they're welding. They breathe it into the nose and it travels along the olfactory nerve to the brain centers and causes a, a condition that's very much like Parkinson's disease. So it's an access of two manganese from the air for the, for the welder to cause Parkinson's disease in the welder. But now you have the same system happening with the vagus nerve from the gut. And so the gut uh, uh, glyphosate prevents uh, the circulation of manganese throughout the body, which means it's deficient in the blood. So there's a systemic manganese deficiency. And then because it piles up in the liver and in the gallbladder, it ends up 
getting sent along the nerve fibers, because it travels so well along nerve fibers, it goes up, up to the brain centers in the, in the, in the uh, brainstem, the brainstem nuclei, which is really bad. And that's where you get uh, Parkinson's disease. So you're getting an, either through the olfactory nerve or through the vagus nerve, you're delivering manganese to the brainstem nuclei, and then that can cause Parkinson's disease. And so actually Parkinson's is associated with glyphosate. Many of the um, herbicides are connected to Parkinson's. And there's, and I remember a paper that was fascinating because they did, um, they looked at agricultural workers and they did a study on associations between various uh, er, uh, herbicides. And I guess maybe even um, all kinds of pesticides that these people were exposed to and looked at the correlation with Parkinson's disease. And they found a correlation for a lot of them. And then they actually did a, a step to, uh, to, to take into account what else they were exposed to at the same time and to do a correction for that, for all the different exposures. And when they did that, everything else went down and glyphosate went up. In other words, glyphosate, it, it really felt like glyphosate was the stronger signal than the other one. So I think glyphosate is a major risk factor for Parkinson's disease. If you enjoyed that clip, you're gonna wanna head over here and catch a full episode. I'll see you over there. A lot of people don't know what glyphosate is, and I admit I didn't know what it was either back in 2010, 2011. They patented it to be used to strip metals off of pipes because it's very good at chelating metals. I think it was an accidental discovery.